My name is Dr. Celestia Tia Higano. I'm a medical oncologist at University of Washington and Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. Dr. Higano, you are a medical oncologist who specializes in the treatment of advanced prostate cancer. But can you comment on whether you feel patients get an appropriate spectrum of advice when they get diagnosed with relatively early stage disease? I think patients get a spectrum of advice that ranges from very good to not so very good. And I think it depends on who's delivering the message and how much time they have to spend. And unfortunately, in this day and age, a lot of physicians don't have enough time to really educate patients. Do you feel that we could do better at setting up systems in the community, as opposed to at major academic medical centers, that would allow patients to get high-quality, multidisciplinary guidance at diagnosis? Uh, I think it's harder in a community setting because the physicians tend to be in multiple locations. In general, I like to see patients go to tertiary care centers where the specialists are all in one location. Furthermore, we know that if a patient is going to be treated with surgery in particular, that urologists who have more experience with the procedure have better outcomes. The average community urologist does six radical prostatectomies a year compared with 100 or more um, done by university-based physicians or other urologists who might be in the community but who specifically specialize in this procedure. So I think the real message is to go to a urologist or a multidisciplinary team where they have a lot of experience. I think that's the key. With the availability of docetaxel and the future potential of Provenge, abiraterone acetate, and other new agents, are we going to see a radical change in the treatment of early stage disease in the next decade, with newer drug therapies replacing surgery and radiation? I wish I had a crystal ball on that. I think that we're going to be studying these newer agents earlier. Uh, in fact, we're participating right now in a study that's looking at Provenge before patients even have surgery. But whether any of these very promising agents are going to replace um, a directed approach with either surgery or radiation, I think is somewhat doubtful, just based on other cancers where uh, you know, surgery or radiation remain the mainstay of treatment at the earliest stages. Can you talk to us about your perspectives on the short-term potential of Provenge, abiraterone, and other drugs currently entering clinical trials? What do you see as the immediate opportunities here? Well, I think Provenge is the closest of um, the emerging treatments to hopefully come to FDA approval. Um, we know from using some of these investigational drugs in clinical trials like abiraterone or MDV3100 that these drugs look extremely promising, but they have yet to pass the test of showing benefit in phase three trials where we're comparing head to head um, with, with another treatment. So Provenge has already met that uh, endpoint in, in their phase three program. So these other drugs have to go through the phase three testing and then we'll know if we have as promising a drug as we thought in the earlier stages of development. Is there anything else important that you would care to comment on? Yes, I, I think that, uh, you know, the last question you asked me just asked about, you know, the promising new agents and I think people should understand that we cannot tell if an agent is really as good as we think it is until we get the data from these phase three trials. So we, we have to work on this together. We have to work on this as physicians making these treatments on clinical trials available and patients have to be willing to go on clinical trials. I think one of the, the things that is not very well described to patients when they sign up for trials is that a placebo does not necessarily equal an inferior treatment. As a matter of fact, there are numerous examples in the last few years in prostate cancer even, where the placebo arm did better than the you know, promising investigational arm. So this is exactly why we have to do phase three trials to show that the promising drug is as promising as we really thought it was when it wasn't compared to anything. 
So unless we have patients participate in trials, we really can't make progress. So uh, that's my final comment on, on where, what, what we should be doing as doctors and patients together.